Pulaski, Tennessee. What can I say? When you Google it, first thing that comes to mind is fear. This is Pulaski, Tennessee. And the Ku Klux Klan began back in 1865 on Christmas Eve, when six ex-Confederate soldiers met to form a social club. So hey guys, we just entered the town of Pulaski, Tennessee, and apparently this is where the KKK started after the Civil War. We're gonna drive through. I've been maybe a little worried. You okay? Oh, I'm perfectly fine. It's a looks, beautiful town. Looks beautiful, actually. Um, I'm gonna have to say for being quite a, a small town, we've got snow right now and it just looks absolutely Beautiful. So we did the drive from Nashville down here. It's about an hour. If we're able to and have some more time today, we're gonna continue and go to Huntsville, Alabama. We will show you everything that this little town has to see and talk a little bit about its history. Stop at the museum, see uh, what happened here during the Civil War and some of the history that's still located here in Pulaski. Welcome to Pulaski! Sam Davis, a Confederate soldier executed by the Union forces in Pulaski. During the American Civil War, he was popularly known as the Boy Hero of the Confederacy. And although he was 21 when he died, he became a celebrated instance of the Confederate memorialization in the late 1890s and early 1900s. Pulaski, Tennessee. What can I say? When you Google it, first thing that comes to mind is fear. One thing that we've learned throughout our travels is history is not nice all the time but our experience in this town has been completely the opposite to our expectations we've enjoyed the people we've enjoyed the food the town is completely beautiful and yes there is a dark history to this town but there's a dark history to every town so what i recommend is get out of your comfort zone come and learn about your history and the history around the world and check out what's out there. It's amazing because this was not really taught to me in school. We spent 20 minutes on the Indian removal. Something like 60,000 Indians all told being from the Five Nations being relocated. 16,000 Cherokee. The first band went in the height of summer and the heat was oppressive and they ran out of supplies. They ran out of money to buy new supplies. Some of the merchants would sell with them. The death toll was allowed to be outrageous. The company commander with the troop of soldiers that was escorting this party was reporting back to North Carolina all these details. And they kept holding them and they kept holding them and they kept holding them. And finally, it was like November and December before they finally decided to let them go. And they were spread out from like here in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois all the way to Huntsville, or, or further south. Just different bands going different routes. Of course, now it's the height of winter, and there's snow on the ground, and ice, but otherwise the same conditions. They're running out of food. They only have so much money for supplies. Merchants aren't willing to sell to them. Even when the army officers go into the stores to try to buy food, they're not being cooperative. And they're not, and they're not, and they're trying to buy, buy blankets as well as food and all this stuff. And they're just, the store owners are just not cooperating. And so I think it was between 2,000 and 4,000 die, all told. And that's just the Cherokee. Uh, one of the other bands also had about 16,000 moved, also had two to 4,000 die. So yeah, we're talking like or as many as eight or 9,000. Two of the companies went through here, only two companies. A 
some of us are proud of it, some of us aren't. And those of us that aren't proud of it, I just live with it. Right. Good, good or bad, it's still our history. You know, the guy who owns the building where the KKK itself was formed, which is just around the corner here, yeah. it's on the National Historic Registry. There's a plaque on it that says all this. He can't take the plaque down, even though he wants to. Oh, wow. He can legally do that, yeah. He, just yeah, he can legally flip it over. He cannot legally yeah, remove right. it because the building is a National Historic Landmark. National Historic. So this is the historic plaque that has been flipped over and apparently it's a big deal that people come here and see it. The owners of the building flipped it over to be able to represent the fact that they didn't want people to come and see it. Uh, this is actually the, the second most fought over state during the Civil War. Pulaski was settled right around 1810. Pulaski, the city is named for the Revolutionary War hero, Casimir Pulaski, who was a Polish count who was in disgrace in his homeland and came here and volunteered to fight for the Continental Army, as it was called. It was an incredible time at the museum, but the museum manager told us to go visit this very old drugstore. She got a vanilla malt, and then we'll grab a cup of flow too, please. Okay. So I feel like it's like a blast from the past, and we walk back into like 1932, and Ivan's like, oh look, they've got a soda fountain like in the old pharmacies. And here we are, having a soda float and a malt, a vanilla malt. It's identical to what I would have expected from the decades. This is the sad reality of the past. This is the local movie theater. And as you can see, these are the stairs that the people of color of this town had to climb through the side and up into the balcony to see the movies. Seeing things like this staircase separating colored from white entrances really makes you see how real it was. Segregation is basically the term for separating colored people or people of color from white people, which sounds pretty unfair, right? Well, segregation started around 1865 and ended around 1965 when President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. Segregation made people of color have to be separated from whites for doing simple daily tasks. The Yellow Deli. I actually feel like this is what Disney, Disney tries to recreate in that little like bear town. happened upon, what is this place called? The Yellow, the Yellow Deli story, or the Yellow Deli is what it's called, and it's actually all over the place. Had no idea. Um, super cute. Looks like the food's gonna be really good. It's like, like a country-esque feeling in here, in an old house, and the food is all fresh deli, so you can make your own sandwich or breakfast, and it looks to die for, to be quite honest and the ambiance as well. So we found this restaurant called the Yellow Deli here in Pulaski, Tennessee. Now I've never heard of it, but apparently they're all over the US. But I highly recommend if you are in the area or you see a yellow, the Yellow Deli, stop and check it out. It's really good. Hey guys, so just to pause a second, the Yellow Deli is owned by the 12 Tribes. The 12 Tribes is a religious group that staffs their delis with unpaid tribe members. If you are interested in learning more about this group, they have been in the news recently. But I'm going to have to say, overall, their food was really good. It was great seeing the history from the South. 
Even if it's dark and cruel, it's good to remember it so we do not repeat the same actions we did as in the past. Thank you for watching our channel, and please subscribe, leave a comment below, and ring the bell for our next video notification. We'll see you next weekend, guys.